Hello everybody again, thank you for your patience. We're having the usual glitches that we have when we try and have three different locations presenting. Um, however, we will um, do the Albany, we will talk with Andrew Duffield and David Clarkson about the Albany Green Road project now and then we'll go to the Denmark um, water pipeline afterwards. So thanks for being flexible. That's very good. Um, thank you very much. And then I might throw to you Andrew. Andrew is with Main Roads here um, locally. And David Clarkson, who Nathan is going to put on speakerphone, he's unable to have his video, so we won't see him, but he will be on speakerphone and be able to talk with us um, online and answer any questions. And David is from Infrastructure WA and is in charge of the project delivery component. Is that right, Andrew? Uh, not quite. David no. uh, is from Main Roads. He's the project director. Project so he'll, director. Be, he'll be leading up the um, delivery of the project uh, on the ground Great. in consultation with some of our staff uh, in the Albany office. Great. Well, over to you. This is one of our big and very exciting and long Okay, so Absolutely. Um, thanks, Benita, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, it's uh, great to catch up again and, and just talk about where we're at with uh, this project, but also I thought I'd uh, just touch base briefly with another one of our key projects, being the South Coast Highway uh, Upgrade uh, Project and, and a great opportunity to give everybody a, a quick update um, with regard to that project. We can advance. We can go. Yep. Thank you. So, yeah, the two the two projects that I would um, was keen to talk about today, obviously the ring road, uh, and importantly, the, I guess the key message there um, is that both these projects are fully funded and we're fully committed to delivery. So um, they're they're ready to go. The the Commonwealth funding and the state funding for the ring road has been secured, and uh, we're all systems go ready to roll into the delivery phase. So uh, in terms of the funding side of things, $175 million is allocated to the Albany Ring Road project. Uh, if you've been following some of the media statements over the last week or so, um, you will see the commitment to start work on the ground in the third quarter of this year. So that's uh, 2020, uh, and that will see construction across a number of years finishing up in 2023. Uh, the South Coast Highway Upgrade Program that I mentioned earlier, uh, that's part of a $30 million program. We're halfway through that program now. Um, for those of you who have travelled on South Coast Highway recently, you would have seen the Mead Road passing lane, the Calvin section that we've recently finished, and we're about to, to roll into the Coach Near Up section uh, later this, uh, well, this coming summer. Okay, I'm, I'm working with the technology, okay. Uh, just a Thanks, Benita. A quick update on South Coast Highway. The two sections that I mentioned um, comprising $15 million worth of expenditure, a great deal of that to, to local subcontractors within the Albany area. Uh, the project that we are about to go to public tender with is the Coach Near Up section. Uh, we'll be utilising our new state road construction panel contract. You may have seen some media announcements around that again earlier this week. Uh, basically, that's to um, uh, it's it's a way of fast tracking the delivery or the procurement of, of these types of works. So the timeline for this project, uh, I'll, I'll, cut, I'll touch on shortly. But in terms of the work, uh, we're looking at constructing two passing lanes, uh, one eastbound and one westbound between uh, Bluff Creek Road and Coach Near Up West Road. So that's in the order of about six kilometres in total of road reconstruction and the provision of those two passing lanes as well as the other associated uh, work. Uh, if you've been following the South Coast Highway uh, discussion, I, I guess, um, we have made a lot of progress in terms of design development for works on that road, and we are shovel ready uh, on a number of other sites. Uh, and so we're seeking opportunities, every opportunity, in fact, to try and secure some funding to be able to deliver those projects. So um, that's still a work in progress for us in securing those funds. In terms of the dates for South Coast Highway, uh, we're looking to go to tender in June, uh, just finalising environmental clearances at the moment. We're quite advanced with that, so we're in a good space. That will allow us to award the contract uh, in the October period, with um, looking to start construction around about November and finish construction uh, early in 2021. So that's the broad uh, timeline for the coaching your up section. 
Turning now to the Ring Road, uh, and I'm sure you've all heard a lot about the Ring Road and what it does, but I thought I'd just quickly recap the project. Essentially, it's uh, uh, just over 11 kilometres of uh, new construction that sees a dedicated freight route to the port being constructed that will allow unimpeded road access to the port. It is about the viability of the port into the long term, uh, the largest export, grain export port in all of Australia, so we need to uh, ensure its sustainability into the long term. But aside from that, it will relieve some of the congestion that we're seeing on the local road network, particularly leading into the big roundabout, and of course, along with that, um, the safety enhancements that come. And uh, of course, 175 million has been secured for the project, which by far is the largest road uh, improvement project that we've seen in the Great Southern Region. In terms of the Albany Ring Road project, uh, it's been in the planning for a long time, as you would all know. This just provides a, a very quick overview uh, of, of the project. So if you can follow the dots, uh, item one is, uh, thanks Nathan, item one is Anang Drive, uh, which was constructed in 2007. So what we'll be doing essentially is modifying the intersection of Manang Drive with Albany Highway to form a new uh, grade separated interchange, essentially a bridge, which will allow free flow traffic in both directions at that location. The section on Link Road will be one of the first sections that we'll be looking to construct at Clarks, and we'll talk more about that very shortly. Uh, but essentially that alignment runs to the east of the existing Link Road, which will run through from the Albany Highway down to South Coast Highway. South Coast Highway, again, is the second of uh, the planned grade separated interchanges or bridge, bridges in that particular area, which will allow the ring road to pass underneath South Coast Highway. Uh, the road then swings down, uh, stays north of the rail line, um, and we, we squeeze up there, we've been able to, to um, reach an in principle agreement with ARC infrastructure to compress the road and the rail reserves to, to make sure we have a reasonable alignment through there, which sees us connect the ring road uh, through the Hanrahan Road, Frenchman's Bay Road interchange and uh, back into Princess Royal Drive. On this particular slide, you could also see item 12, which is in the top right hand corner. Um, this is the eastern connection of Manang Drive, where it intersects with Chester Pass Road. Part of the, the, um, the design and construct contract that we're, looking, that we're developing at the moment uh, includes uh, an optional section of work to construct a flyover or grade separated interchange at that particular location. That will allow the free flow of traffic up and over Chester Pass Road and onto the Ring Road. Um, subject to getting some sharp prices and having some budget availability in that space. Perhaps Dave could talk to that a little later. But essentially, uh, that's, the, um, that's the, the ring road at a glance. If you haven't seen the video uh, of the route, I think Nathan's about to show that now. And uh, this is also available, the video that is on our website uh, at Main Roads uh, WA. If you Google that, and go to the project site and check out Albany Ring Road, you'd be able to see the video of the route. So I'll just get the video off now for you. This video, Nathan, has no sound. Is that right? Am I going to get talked through that? Or yeah, so, um, yeah, so you can listen to my dulcet tones if you'd yeah. like to. Could you sing? <laughs> well, I can sing, but no one will want me to sing. But, uh, uh, and while, while um, you're explaining this, I'll get David. We're going to call David in and put him on speaker. Um, he's going to have a second half of the presentation. Um, it'll be Andrew. Great. Thank, thank you very much. Okay, so this is the, the broad overview of the project, outlining the various sections as we go through. Bearing in mind, this is the current um, reference design for the project. Okay, so this uh, starts at the eastern end of Manang Drive uh, and it's basically showing the ultimate design here with the, the, the dual carriageway in both directions. We won't be constructing a dual carriageway, we will be constructing a single carriageway. Um, this is the Albany Highway interchange as part of the reference design with Albany Highway going over the top 
of the Albany Ring Road uh, and the various connections that facilitate the movement of traffic at that location. The section we're rolling through now is the Link Road connection, so the first of the uh, construction projects. You can see the line of trees, which is Link Road to your right. Uh, the Albany Ring Road is just to the east of Link Road, making the connection down to South Coast Highway. A major cut zone at that location, I think up to five or six metres uh, cut from the existing through there. And as you can see, South Coast Highway over the top. We then proceed south down George Street uh, and from George Street Moana Drive area as we swing across to the coming road intersection. So this provides connectivity to the Lower Denmark Road and the Tall Bay area and is a major fill zone in its own right, a, a bit over 10 metres in that area. You can see now the alignment of the ring road just to the north of both Lower Denmark Road and the freight rail line as it connects through to Roundhay Street. So this is the existing Roundhay Street. The connection that you see uh, just to the right-hand side of your screen is basically a cutting through the granite outcrops in that area, which connects to the whole Ellica Road. The final section uh, goes to the southern side of the CSBP site and takes us to the main uh, interchange with Hanrahan Road and Frenchman's Bay Road with the idea that Frenchman's Bay Road uh, gets constructed up and over the rail, up and over the Albany Ring Road, and then comes down onto Hammerham Road with a roundabout that will allow circulation of traffic back onto the Ring Road, and also to the right, uh, to a realigned Carlisle slash George Street connection. So there's a lot going on in that particular area, and uh, certainly will be a challenge for construction. Uh, which uh, perhaps Dave can talk to as we proceed to the next section. Thanks, Nathan. That's, that's Thanks, uh, Andrew. Can you all hear me? Yes, Dave, we can. Well, I can hear you, Dave. Uh, are you able to just check the chat that everyone can hear? Um, Dave, nice and clear. And everyone. Um, okay. And so, so, Andrew, if you can uh, flip through the slides for me, that'll be great. Is this, was this thing working? No, it wasn't. Uh, yeah, thanks, Dave. Benita's on the controls here, so if you just so shout if out. If everyone can just let me know if they can come to you, Dave, just um, let us know. That'd be great. Thank you. Yes, they can, so go ahead, Dave. Thank you very much. That, that mind you, just before you start, Dave, that um, image just shows what an absolutely um, face changing experience this is going to be for the landscape developing, isn't it? As well as being a transport change, it's also going oh, to be absolutely. a huge change for Albany. It's phenomenal. It's, it explains why it's taken such a long time to. Oh, no, and absolutely, a, a massive change which will have impacts, you know, across the community, but a, you know, a fantastic range of opportunities for the yeah. community as well. And so, Dave, thank you, and apologies we weren't able to make that technology work for you, but welcome, and everybody can hear you, and we, yeah, if you would like to go ahead, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, okay. Then. So, Andrew's giving you the, the why and, and where. So I'm going to run you through a bit on the when. So, we've uh, I've got the first slide up there, which um, shows you phase one. What we've done with this particular project in order to get the project started uh, reasonably early uh, and not, not later is that we've uh, divided up into a couple of different sections. So we've got phase one which we're showing here. Phase one, we've got the environmental approvals for this. We've also given it a uh, duration which is pretty tight. And what that means is, is that this part should start pretty early and we're hoping that this section will start uh, hopefully around about October, November, this coming year, which I'm sure most of the people in Albany will love uh, will to see a, a hole start to be dug in the ground. We then also split the project up into a number of phases because of the environmental approval. So if we move to the next slide, uh, which is show phase two, I'm assuming that's up there. It is that, yes. So we've got phase two up there. Phase two, we've still got to uh, get environmental approvals for the intersection. This is a bit trickier. There's a few more uh, uh, elements to uh, getting the approval in this particular section. Um, and so this one will be starting later after the, the second one. In order that we can start it as soon as possible, uh, as soon as we get the contract 
Um, and also, pretty importantly, what risks that they're going to maintain um, in order so that, so let's say, the mums and dads operators uh, aren't exposed to, to too much risk. Also, we're asking them to provide us what payment plans they're going to, to uh, undertake with, the, um, with their subcontractors, uh, the local businesses. And this is pretty important. You've probably all heard how Rio Tinto at one stage was proposing, I think, it was a 60 day payment period. We're looking here for them to provide some very reasonable payment terms, uh, certainly a lot less than what they would ordinarily have. Uh, with their subcontractors. And the last point there is, is to um, also support local contractors. Some of them might want to start to become pre qualified with main roads that they can take on their own works. Uh, often to get pre qualification under the national scheme, all of a sudden mining companies, other companies become interested. They often ask for contractors that have these type of uh, qualifications. So we're asking the uh, main contractor to also tell us and lock in within their plan how they're going to achieve uh, that part of the, uh, of the project. Um, I'll also point out there, we've got a definition of local business in there. Basically, we said it's within a, an arc of 100 kilometres from, from Albany. So that, that will also provide to some of the outlying towns of Mount Barker uh, there. And the last one there is um, to be opportunities um, and we're hoping we'll go out to, to plant labour, fuel, accommodation, a, a whole range of businesses that are going to be within Albany. The second uh, point we've got there is Aboriginal participation, and this is a very important aspect of main roads, particularly within our um, uh, major projects. Um, we provide an incentivised um, component to the contract. These incentives are pretty large. For this particular contract, the minimum requirement that they have before the incentives will kick in is 10 to 10. That minimum is they also must achieve that, otherwise they're in breach of contract. Uh, there's also a cap then at, at 30 to 10. So in between the 10 to 10 and 30 to 10, um, there's a, a, a linear scale of which the incentivisation um, is applied. We've also got the last bullet point there, um, which says two percent of the contract sum is to be allocated to Aboriginal businesses. This is the minimum requirement as well, uh, and if they don't achieve that, they're in breach of contract as well. Um, and now we're open to questions. Thank you, Dave. That's um, that's great. If um, I've got one question here, but just before I go to that question, I, I just have one myself. Um, and I always get to ask all the naive questions. I know. Um, you talked about um, if people don't meet those requirements that you outlined, that they will be in breach of contract. But I imagine that changing your contractor at that point in time, um, you know, that you discover that they're in breach of that might. Be a little difficult. So, what happens? What kinds of penalties, or what kind of, when someone's in breach of contract for not having that Indigenous employment or contracting component or that local content in their contract? What happens next? So, if they are a breaching contract, um, we fill in regular contract performance reports. Um, they go into our system. They can also be accessed by other states. So when that contractor then starts applying for other contracts, uh, he gets a, a, a red mark, so to speak, uh, on that. So that's one way that we can tackle it. The other way is if he's in, in breach of this and he's also not performing in another field, we could end up actually terminating the contract. So there's a range of, of uh, um, uh, measures that we might take in terms of if he's not achieving what he said. Uh, to us that he would achieve, or they would achieve, sorry, not he. Great, thank you. And um, Charlotte McIntyre is from GSDC. She's our uh, Great Southern Local Content Advisor. And Charlotte has a question about, um, she's saying, once you've selected the preferred lead contractor, um, will that lead contractor be the same for the stages two and three, or just stage two? She wasn't quite sure. 
Yeah, so, so once we have a contractor, uh, yes, that, that will be for all tweet away. So the contract's actually set up and, and we're now getting too technical. We've got a core part of the contract which is phase one, the design and construction phase one, and the design from phase two. Now, that's a bit different. She was asking about stage two and stage three. Um, the phases and components of the stages. Um, and then the construction of our phase, phase two is optional work. It's optional because we can't award that part of the contract until we have the statutory approvals of the environmental approvals. But to answer the question very simply, we certainly anticipate and I'm ninety five percent confident that the contractor will start from the beginning and go all the way through the end. And Charlotte had a question for our previous presenter um, that we wanted to ask you as well, and that is, are you intending to publish any um, list of the types of businesses that may be required by the head contractors so that the community can, and the, you know, the businesses in our community can work with us to try and prepare themselves and build their capacity to be able to be useful to them? So once we see their, their industry sustainability plan, um, it should also outline in that plan what measures they're going to take to, to do what we're talking about uh, and then we'll be seeing that they do actually undertake what they uh, said that they would do. Great, I think um, Melanie's saying that Watercourt recently put out a register for local content and contractors for Albany to Denmark Pipeline, which we're going to hear about in a minute. Um, will um, Main Roads WA do the same? Well, I think I think we'll certainly, as we always do, work closely with the GSDC as well with the, the local content register. So uh, that's part of the I think the process. Once we get to the preferred proponent stage, we'll be able to, to roll that out. But certainly, we want people to to see the opportunities that are there and to make the most of those opportunities. That's great. And I have another question. Um, the Chamber is really, um, has a program called Working Together, which many of you will be familiar with, and that's about trying to increase the number of um, Indigenous employees and businesses that get access to contracts. So we share that as an outcome or an intended outcome, so that's really great. And um, we're wondering what um, types of um, additional Supports are available to identify or communicate. So sometimes we need to make an extra effort to get the same outcome from those. What kind of additional uh, work is being done to increase that engagement? And is there any opportunities for us as a chamber to support that? Yeah, well, I guess, um, Dave, I'll just jump in here quickly. I mean, we're doing a number of things ourselves mm -hmm. with our own um, maintenance contracts, particularly for our long term maintenance contracts with full code. And so we do have uh, Aboriginal engagement advisors uh, on that, an advisor on that group, and we are working proactively with the, with the broader Aboriginal community to really try to understand some of the constraints and, and work with the community to overcome some of those constraints. Mm -hmm. We're looking to do something similar with the engagement plans, Dave, under, under this particular contract. Yeah, and... Um that, that's great to hear. And what are some of the things I think um, for Indigenous organisations that might be starting up and wanting to get engaged, or as I asked earlier, other subcontractors or tradies that want to for the first time get engaged? What are the things that they should, because they have a long leading time for some of these things, so what should they be doing and thinking about now in terms of either building their relationship with their contractors or getting up to speed with all the requirements? What's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, Dave, you want to have a go with that one? Uh, yeah, I think that you want me to answer that one. Um, it, it's probably the usual thing, you know, get, get your paperwork in order, um, get your resume done. There's, there's two aspects that we pointed out to, there's the businesses as well as the individuals. Um, so the businesses, you want to get yourself in, in to position to be able to, um, to approach the preferred proponent. Um, or, or at least to uh, participate in any of the uh, workshops and, and that that he may have. Um, because he'll, he'll be looking for people, he'll, he'll be looking for skilled people to be able to to do the work. Um, people in Albany have an advantage over the contract of bringing people in from outside because they live there, uh, he's not having to pay accommodation costs or anything 
like that. So for these people, um, you know, if they're, they're skilled, if they can uh, do the work that's required, then they're going to be in a good position and um, yeah, they should look at making themselves available to the contractor. Yeah, and I think probably just to expand that a little more broadly, I mean, outside of the Ring Road, you know, we release you know, various contract packages throughout the year. And I think one of the things is just open communication. So if people are looking at some of our tender documents and we're very happy to, um, to provide uh, clarification, if you like, or answer any questions, you know, during that tender process. And I think if, if, that, if that is done in a timely manner, not, certainly not right at the, at the death knock, um, then I think lots of tenderers will be in better positions to put in more competitive um, competitive bids and to understand the process uh, better than they currently do, perhaps. Right, right, that's really good. Um, and is there something that we can do to support our members? To support, well, I, I think, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe an information sharing session about um, some of their experiences with uh, tendering with government agencies, perhaps, or tendering with main roads. I mean, we're very happy to talk to, yeah. to people about their experiences in that regard. We, we, we don't try to make it hard, but we need to make it um, a, a rigorous and a, and a fair and transparent process. But, you know, beyond that, uh, we try to make it as, um, as smooth as we possibly can. That's great. We appreciate that, and especially the fact that your ear means a lot, um, a lot to um, our listeners as well as to us as a chamber. So we appreciate that definitely. If there are um, no other questions online, um, Charlotte, just be um, I'm conscious that um, you've been doing some thinking about um, exactly what we're talking about here. How do we support people to? perhaps learn how to put in a good tender and, and how to make the, um, do the best they can to put their best foot forward in that competitive environment. Um, I have attempted to turn your sound and camera, um, your camera on and your sound um, on as well. So Charlotte, are you able to talk from the perspective of the local content advisor about what kind of supports you are able to offer for, for businesses thinking about your programs? Yes. Can you hear me okay? Uh, we can. Yes. yes. Yeah. Thanks, Benita. So I was actually, while what before you started asking, I was looking through our list of resources because the thing that I'm thinking about is in the subcontractor area to help them prepare for the approach of the head contractor or even to be more proactive and approach the head contractor. Assist them to prepare capability uh, statements, for example, for their businesses, um, and uh, to to help to prepare them for the type of work that the head contractor is going to be looking for. Um, what what are your thoughts on that, Andrew or Dave? In that, if we get in early now and talk to our great southern businesses and help them be all in the same space so that they have a really powerful capability statement. They know what kind of work the head contractor is going to be looking for and they're ready to kind of jump on him in the nicest possible way as soon as he materialises. Uh, yeah, uh, Dave, do you want to go first on that one? Uh, yeah, that, that's a great idea. Um, and that from, we've already gone through an expression of interest um, phase and I was quite impressed that uh, the proponents had already done a, quite a bit of work in this area. And they they have given us um, quite a substantial list of, of Aboriginal businesses uh, within that. But, but certainly to grab what they've done and add to it, um, certainly you know, people haven't been visible, people haven't um, come forward and, and been promoting themselves. Yeah, to, to then get to that stage where we can add to that list, uh, yeah, all better. Yeah, absolutely. So, and I think you know that, that makes good uh, business development sense to, to me. I mean, um, but but uh, I guess I would say think more broadly than the Albany Ring Road project as well. I did mention South Coast Highway, and uh, I did mention that we're looking to deliver that through the statewide road construction panel contract. That's a new contract that has nineteen uh, more major contractors on that particular panel. So. To me, that would be a good starting point to, to make sure that um, if you're an Albany subcontractor in that civil space, to maybe make some representation to members of that group 
uh, if members of that group are likely to tender on some of our work. So, yeah, I, I would support that, absolutely. Great, thanks very much. Yeah, thanks, and thank you too, Charlotte. I appreciate that. I put you on the spot there, but I knew that I was confident in you exactly what to talk about. But um, Andrew and um, David, um, thank you very much for, for being here and for, for sharing with us. We'll take on board some of those suggestions, and I'm certain that my, um, our people who've joined us today have got a great deal of value from it, so I really appreciate it. Great. Thanks, Peter. And of course, um, members in the Albany area, you know where we are. We're based in town. If you have any questions or queries, I'm certainly based here. Uh, members of David's team are based in our office as well. So please feel free to drop in and, and um, you know, come and see us if you have any questions or queries. That's great. That's exactly what people were hoping for. So now they've got a place and a name. That's awesome. So thank you very, very much.